started unless people are trying to go to a different room. Like, feel free to make your changes. I'm not offended. People walk out on me all the time. Uh, uh, my name is Z, and I'll be talking with you a little bit about uh, my company, Zinc, and how we have moved on to uh, a more asynchronous process for our distributed Agile team. Um, uh, all of the things that we do are, are built on this foundation of what we believe makes an effective team. Uh, the first of these is trust. If you can't trust your team members, or if your team members can't trust the executives or your customers, then your team will not be effective. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very simple formula. Uh, and, and building trust is the most important part of any, an, any team, in our, in our opinion. The second is respect. Um, people who respect one another do better work. Uh, if I can respect that you are a diligent person who is doing the best that they can, who can quote the retrospective prime directive right now? Anyone? Yeah, Diana. Uh, so the retrospective prime directive is basically a very simple statement. Uh, I believe that everyone on my team is doing the best they can with the skills, abilities, and experiences that they have. Um, and that is foundational to having an effective team, having this respect for one another. The third is alignment. Um, knowing where you're going uh, is much more important than knowing how you're getting there. Um, I, I have a travel buddy who I sometimes visit, uh, and we just pick a destination, and I just rely on them to figure out how we're going to do things. And we wind up having wonderful adventures because our ideas never work out, but we are aligned on this notion of having a delightful, uh, di a delightful trip to Thailand or a, 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 a wonderful jaunt to Taipei or whatever. Um, and so alignment is a really important part of having a productive team, having an effective team. Uh, freedom, uh, being able to express yourself and do things in the way that you are most comfortable, uh, being free to experiment, to try new technologies, new techniques, new ideas, um, and within the context for alignment is, is very powerful. Uh, it's a, this incredibly motivating thing to be able to take a task and say, you know what? I'm going to try and deliver this user story um, using just purely functional programming idioms. Like no, no uh, object, or, no, not no object oriented design, but no state mutation in between function calls or anything like that. Um, and having the freedom to do that and to experiment um, is a powerful thing because it means you get new ideas and new practices that get integrated into your teammate, uh, into your team much more quickly. Um, and finally, diversity. Uh, if everyone is a programmer with a, a background in computer science, then you're going to have a lot of computer science-y solutions to problems. Um, you may be surprised at this, but programming isn't the solution to all problems in the world. Um, it's hard for me to say that because I am a programmer, but there's lots of problems that are solved by uh, just sitting and listening to someone, or by writing something, or by drawing something. And as a programmer, I'm like, well, what we need here. <laughs> is we need a, a distributed framework for developing uh, communications between these two access points. And what my lovely writer partner does is says, what we need is a haiku. <laughs> and like, if you don't have a diverse team, you won't have those interactions. And if you don't have those interactions, you won't have a significant part of your effectiveness. Um, so synchronicity and asynchronicity. Uh, I explicitly did not use versus here. I think that versus is a, is a bad word. Um, it's a four-letter word in my, in my dictionary. What do I mean by synchronous and asynchronous? Um, well, synchronous things are things which happen in conjunction. So most agile teams are synchronous. You get everyone into a room. They work on the same project. They work on a very small set of user stories at a time. They limit their work in progress. They have retrospectors at retrospectives as a group. They do release planning as a group. They do stand-up as a group. Like, and, and this is a very powerful thing because it means you don't need as much trust, as much freedom, as much alignment, as much respect, or as much diversity. Because you're all in the same spot, you can all kind of like work through your problems and interact more effectively. Um, whereas with an asynchronous team, if you don't have all of these turned to 11, your team is going to fall flat very quickly. Um, and the more asynchronous your team is, the more freedom, uh, alignment, respect, trust, and diversity it needs. Um, so my two favorite words in the English language are yes and. Um, they are incredibly powerful. 
I do not believe that you should have only synchronous teams and only asynchronous teams and never the two shall meet. You shall never interact synchronously with one another. Everyone must send a paper airplane and then wait for a response. That's the only way we communicate. I think that that's a, a, a false dichotomy and it's very harmful. I also think that the false dichotomy of, oh, we always pair, we always have stand up, we always have release planning at the same time, everyone's in the building from eight to five. Like, I also think that is very harmful. Um, and that you, uh, that the most effective teams have a, a solid mix of these. Uh, in my experience, traditional agile teams are about 10%, 20%, 0% asynchronous, um, and about, uh, I'm really good at numbers, see, I put them out of order. Um, and 90-ish percent, 100%, 80% synchronous. Um, with my company, I'm working very hard to make that the opposite. I would like it to be 80% asynchronous and 20% synchronous. Um, and I've got, I've got some reasons for that. So why? Why asynchronous? You just told me that it's more work. Like, I don't want to do more work. No one wants to do more work than they have to do, right? Like, we want to just kind of like do as, as, as little work as possible to create the best results possible. And I really strongly believe that having teams which are founded on asynchronous principles have significant advantages. Uh, the first advantage, I believe, is non-blocking. Um, or or uh, if, you, if you've seen any of the research on any of the progress in the past like 20 years on asynchronous systems, um, if you look at things like parallelization technologies, the amount of cores that CPUs are having nowadays, like all of these things, uh, look at network technologies and how many nodes are involved in many of these networking technologies. Like these are all like very, very big things that are changing the face of technology. We're no longer limited by like we have a single CPU and it takes up like, it takes up the entire thread and that's all you got, right? Um, and if you, has anyone heard of Conway's Law? Yes, we got like three, four. Okay, so Conway's Law is one of my favorite laws. Um, the structure of your organization will be reflected in the structure of your software. So if your team is built to be synchronous, if your team is built on this notion that everyone has to be in the same room, uh, you'll wind up that your code will be in that way as well. Um, I was on a team recently that was technically we were distributed, but we were all synchronous. Um, the, every, every process had to run on the same computer. Like every server had to run every process. And I was like, what? <laughs> How am I supposed to scale this? Like I, I, that's, that's, that's very difficult to scale. Um, and the reason for that in my very strongly held opinions, which I have lots of, is because we, were, uh, we weren't allowed to be non-blocking. We, we always synced up, we had, we had, everyone committed directly to master, there were no pull requests, there was, everyone was pairing, and because of that, our software reflected our synchronous nature of interactions. Uh, and because of that, it was difficult to scale, right? This is a, a, common, a common problem. If you have a lot of blocking operations, then how do you scale? Well, ugh, it's gonna be different depending on every single situation. And then the third and most important part in my mind is joy. Um, I'm here today at Agile India because my team is asynchronous. Like, I wouldn't be here with all you awesome people if, I, my, team was not, was, if my team was synchronous because they would all be depending on me because I am the most technically competent person there according to the job description sheet that I wrote for myself. Um, and if, if I were a synchronous team, I, everyone would be relying on me and I hate to be relied on. I love to be wanted, hate to be needed, right? <laughs> it's, it's kind of my, my thing. So let's kind of think about how traditional synchronous teams work. There's my colors. So if you have a synchronous team, everyone has to maintain these connections with one another. Oops, I missed one, there we go. Is that all of them? Nope. And that's all these connections, all these relationships, all of these, these uh, in interactions that have to be maintained because everyone's contributing directly to primary or master, everyone is kind of like responsible for the product, um, and it's like you've got this conflation and this, this, this very difficult like thing to maintain. Um, and what happens is, so you might have a developer who's got like a user story and they're like, hey, I'm waiting on a product and uh, I'm kind of stuck, so I'm, I'm, I'm stopped, like I'm blocked, right? Everyone's got the blocker like uh, in stand-up where they say, oh, and by the way, I need this from this person, I'm not, I can't do anything until that happens, right? And so the way you solve that in traditional agile teams is you alert your product owner as quickly as possible, who is very likely in some fancy pants executive meeting doing portfolio management where they're trying to decide whether or not who knows whatever. Like there's all kinds of meetings that happen I've discovered. Um, and it's almost impossible even in, uh, even in co-located teams <laughs> to not have someone be gone right when you need them, right? And so you wait for this product person to come back 
and then the product person and the developer kind of talk, and then the developer makes a change in the product, and the product owner's like, yes, that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, great, you got that person unblocked. Um, but what almost never happens is, oopsies, no, come back. What almost never happens is adjusting the, the artifact itself so that that decision is made easier in the future. Like, you, you don't get these situations where the developer updates the principal guideline, like, oh yes, well, we do mobile first for our design. Therefore, I don't have to get the product person when I'm trying to figure out how many widgets need to be on the screen. I can be like, well, on a small screen, I can only support two, so I'm not gonna add four. Like, you can make those decisions now in your head as opposed to being and synchronizing with the product person. Um, whereas asynchronous teams, uh, we, we have to focus almost all of our energy and all of our connection into the, into the artifact we're working on itself. Um, we need to invest our time and energy into updating the documentation. I know the D word is a bad word in Agile circles, but if you're not like documenting your code, not writing good tests, not including your wireframes in your artifacts, not you know, mentioning people in your task tracker, like you're, you're missing out on a lot of information that's kind of like disappearing into the aether. And on asynchronous teams, you have to shovel all that information into the artifact, or as much of it as possible. Um, because then what happens is you get this ability to have discovery and memory. We move past tribal knowledge. We move past like this history of, well, back in the good old days, before we had 25 people, there were two people on this team, and they built it this way, and that's how we liked it, gosh darn it. I'm sure you've all heard that conversation on product teams that have lasted more than two months. Um, excuse me. Uh, you also get this really cool interaction flow where if the expectation is you're asynchronous, you're never blocked. Never ever. I notified product that X is pending there, uh, they, I need their input on it, and so instead I started Y, which might be maybe I'm gonna read a book about uh, closures, core.async functions, or whatever. But like I can immediately switch off of the task that is blocked and switch on to a task that is also valuable but is not, uh, is not that block, is not that. And the way you resolve those is, so the, the developer puts a notification into the artifact. In this case, we use Asana for pretty much all of our task tracking. That's our artifact. Um, and they mention the product person. The product person gets a ping. They see that, oh, maybe they're in their lovely product planning meeting, like, oh, blah. you know what, I'm just gonna reply to this IM real quick. Who cares, no one's paying attention to me anyway. And then they put the phone back in their pocket and the developer can get unblocked very quickly. Um, or, but, but, the, but what often happens at that point is the developer's like, well, that was annoying, and I'm already right in here anyway. I'm going to record this somewhere, either by updating our principles, or updating our design docs, or updating our wireframes, and, and the product owner will, will see those and can then make a comment on them as well. That was an arrow, it doesn't look like an arrow, but I swear it was, let's try that again. There we go. Um, and so you wind up with these richer, these, not necessarily richer, richer is the wrong word. You wind up with these interactions which, because they're focused on the work output, because the work focused on the product, because they're focused on the artifact that you are building together, you are consistently and regularly adapting that artifact to allow yourselves to learn more effectively and allow yourselves to build uh, without getting blocked. And because of that, scaling becomes much easier. So let's go back to our lovely first synchronous team. And let's start just drawing to connections. We added another team member, another developer joined the team, it's great. They're really solid, we think they're top of the line, graduated at the top of their class and all that jazz. Um, but look at all the connections, oh wait, that was one that was already there. Look at all the connections they have to just maintain. Like we went from, uh, do, do, do. we got more, uh, yeah. So we went from, and I can scroll back, something that kind of looked reasonable from a connection standpoint to something that is pretty much a tangled mess, right? Here, oops, and I was even missing some. Yeah, on that one, on that one. Oh no, that one's already there. Um, and so like, just adding one person to a five person team, like, uh, I don't, I'm not good at math, computers do that for me. Um, it adds a significant amount of connections to, to the amount of relationships that you have to maintain. And maintaining relationships is the hard part of software development. Um, maintaining and building relationships is the hard part. 
So what happens if you're on an asynchronous team and you add someone? You just add another node into your, into your artifact. You teach them how to use Asana, you teach them how to use GitHub Flow, you teach them how to use Slack, and you're like, okay, you're not gonna know everyone as closely as you would on a synchronous team. You don't necessarily, you're not gonna be going out for beers after work or necessarily playing games in the middle of the day, but you're going to have a very specific set of ways in which you interact with one another, and those ways that you interact with one another will be, um, uh, will, will, will hopefully facilitate an effective uh, experience for you as a developer, or as, a, as an additional team member. So let's talk about joy. Um, I, I'm, I don't know how much time I've got left. I intended to start a timer, but then I kind of like freaked out. Um, apologies, I get really nervous when I talk in front of people. Uh, but the thing about joy is, uh, if you can learn more and better, you are more joyful, in my opinion. I am a much happier developer, a much happier person when I'm learning new things and becoming a better master at my chosen profession. Um, and if you're working on an asynchronous team, there's all kinds of slack, right? And slack is this critical component to effective, uh, effective like cognition, right? If you've, uh, there's a lovely talk called Hammock Driven Development. I would recommend you all watch it and then get a hammock for your office. Um, or at least you know, go home more often maybe. Um, but like in asynchronous teams, because you, the focus is on learning better, stronger, faster, and not necessarily on communicating like synchronously better, stronger, faster, uh, you wind up having a little bit more joy in your life, in my opinion. Um, you get to be more flexible. Uh, like I said, I'm here with all of you wonderful people because my team doesn't depend on me. My team wants me to be there. They, are, they definitely are missing me, but they're not less effective because I'm not there. Even though we're a very like relatively young team, and even though we are relatively like uh, cross skilled, like there's no one, no one's, no one's upset or freaking out because I'm not there to hold their hand, which is incredible. Um, and it's it's just more fun. Um, I get to go to my cousin's wedding and not worry about it. Uh, I'm planning a lovely jaunt to Costa Rica with my partner, and we'll probably not have to worry about it. Um, and there's this so much, we're just so much more flexible and more um, able to adapt to uh, people not being in the room because we don't expect people to be in the room, that uh, as a person I can have more fun outside of work. And the other, the other final thing is we can be more diverse. Um, I don't know about you, but I have a burnout problem. I tend to work 60 hour weeks and then flip a table and just stop working for three months. Um, and I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> My partner would like me to get better at that. Um, but because I can, I can actually scale down to a day a week when I'm getting burned out. I can be like, you know what? I'm not going to be doing six day weeks. I'm going to be doing two day weeks. Um, I can hire people who maybe can't get into an office very easily. I can hire people who maybe can't, uh, who maybe have vision uh, problems or hearing problems uh, because, they, uh, because they are not expected to be able to maintain a conversation in like real time, which is very hard for some people, um, they can instead take the time to think about how they're going to respond and think about the words that were said. Um, so we wound up with, uh, we, with a much more diverse team than any team that I've ever worked with from a, a, a skills and abilities perspective. The other cool thing is because we can work with people at like a half day increment and they can be productive, is I can hire a writer for my staff. Like how many of your technical teams have a creative writer on their team? None. Do you know how awesome having a creative writer on your team is? Oh my goodness, whenever marketing copy has to be written, I just ping them in Asana. When they wake up on Wednesday or whatever day they decide to work that week, they open up their Asana inbox and say, oh, we need some marketing copy written. Z wrote some horrible stuff. I'm gonna write some better stuff, submit a pull request back in, and now we've got this great marketing copy that's 10% more grabby. Um, and I can pay them at a half day of a time because they're freelancers, they're, they have a lot of clients already, and they're perfectly happy to make 300 bucks a day for, for writing and, and such type of work. So that's my pitch. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I really believe that the future of computing and the future of uh, relationships and the future of uh, technology teams is asynchronous. Um, even companies that are working together, like GitHub, for instance, is co-located, is very asynchronous. Slack is very asynchronous despite having everyone in the office. Um, and, and learning how to work effectively as an asynchronous team will make you much more effective as a synchronous team. So if you want to chat about this, I will be around the conference center. Um, I tend to kind of hallway track and or hide in my room because I'm not really a people person. Also probably why I like asynchronous teams. 
Um, and you can always hit me up on zspencer at Twitter. I'm always happy to respond to tweets. I'm literally on Twitter all the time. So thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, they are asynchronous, they are uh, uh, more joyous. Mm -hmm. uh, they do it their own way. The cent uh, in the center is the product that is to be uh, delivered, and they all contribute to it. Mm -hmm. But the only uh, the challenge that I would see is the individual culture and uh, the way individuals would interact. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the biggest challenge to build an asynchronous team would be, is what I feel, is uh, hiring the right people. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, uh, it was kind of, there was a, a part of it was a statement around like GitHub and open source and like all of these projects are already asynchronous, right? And there's already a lot of fun that's happening there, a lot of freedom around what's happening. Um, and how do you ensure that you're hiring and bringing on the right people uh, that can work effectively in that situation? Um, and my answer to any question about hiring is you don't hire for skills, you hire for mindset. Um, so there's this notion of a growth mindset, which is a lovely book by Carol Dweck. Um, everyone should read that book at least once in their lifetime. Um, but it talks about how you can identify and help grow the skills in people in, uh, in believing that they can actually learn things and be more effective. If you, can, if you hire someone who thinks that, well, I'm not good at this and I never will be, like, then they never will be. <laughs> um, neuroplasticity is a powerful thing, right? But if you hire someone who thinks I'm getting better at this and I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to be more effective, then they will continue to learn and be more effective. Um, and so that's my core criteria for hiring. Uh, the second thing that I worry about hiring for is, is there some amount of valuable skills that they can bring to the table right now? So yeah, maybe the writer doesn't understand GitHub, but oh my goodness, they can like prevent me from burning two to four hours trying to get the perfect like advertising copy. Um, they can just kind of do that and I, I don't have to worry about it. So I'll happily train them on how to use GitHub so that they don't, that I don't have to, uh, so that I can rely on them for the, uh, the writing bits. Um, so those are really the two ways that I hire. Growth mindset and do they have a core set of skills? And you know, not a lot of companies support that. <laughs> uh, and that's why I started my own. Uh, I kind of got sick of uh, getting told no by too many bosses. Um, other questions? I don't know how much time we have, let me. Hi, uh, here. Oh. here. I have a question. So I think a lot of things which you talked about are counterintuitive. And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, uh, I would not use against, but I think uh, agile principles, I think uh, against some of the agile principles also. Uh, and uh, uh, one another statement which I want to make is that, okay, how human beings have evolved. I mean, they want to work in a community and as a tribe also, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so d does the async uh, uh, teams, I mean, do they have to be very mature teams or is it applicable for the common or uh, Common people also. Oops. Okay, I'll just I'll just hold the microphone. Um, so the question, if I if I understand, I want to make sure I'm repeating it for you. Is um, first of all, this seems like it's like counter to the agile principles. Um, so uh, and I, I disagree with that almost entirely. <laughs> I think it's actually more in line with the agile principles because we we value individuals and their interactions more than a set of rules around how that they have to interact. So uh, if you work better by going off into a room for four hours and like really powering through a problem and then getting some feedback at the end, we can support that because we're asynchronous. If you work better by pair programming with someone constantly, we can support that because we're asynchronous and because asynchronous systems can also be synchronous systems. It is easier, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if you've done much node programming, but if you take an asynchronous system and make it synchronous, that's far easier than taking a synchronous system and making it asynchronous. Um, the other thing of contract, uh, uh, like adapting over following a plan, like we can adapt so much easier because we don't have like this lockstep. If you, if, uh, if you remember the, there was a, what was the, there was this lovely story, not really lovely, it was the end of World War II. Um, we were flying aid into Germany. We were trying to make sure that like people could get back on their feet and weren't starving to death after like war has ravaged their country. And our planes would come in and they would be synchronous. Every plane would have to land, every plane would have to fly back. And it, we wound up with these log jams that some planes would literally just be like, okay, we're almost out of fuel, everything just doesn't work, and you'd wind up having a, a, a significant in, inefficiencies within the system. And so one general was like, let's be asynchronous. If you don't show up on time, 
you're out. Just go back home. It's fine. And what that did is it introduced enough slack in the system that they were able to land about 30 to 40% more planes because they explicitly chose to turn around when they, when they didn't land there on time. So because they were able to adapt as opposed to be forced to follow a plan, like that's a really powerful thing. So I, and I could rant about like the agile principles and how like asynchronicity is actually a powerful tool in an in, in, for the agile tool, uh, agile, uh, in the agile manifesto. Um, but the, the follow-on question was, is this for everyone? Um, and I think the answer is yes, because I think everyone is capable of learning new skills and learning new abilities. I think it's hard work. Um, so like I said, if you have a synchronous team and you do, uh, like you don't need as much trust and respect. Like you have like face to face all the time, like you're building your trust and respect through that. Um, whereas an asynchronous team, you kind of have to start with a lot of trust and respect. I'm kind of like blowing in the microphone, it's annoying me. Uh, so I think everyone can do it, but it's hard work and it takes time. And I don't expect that we'll be there in 50, 100, or 200 years, but I think that we, um, you'll see more and more companies that are doing this. Um, and I think that's time. So uh, I would be happy to answer questions outside in the hallway. Um, and uh, yes, so thank you all very much again.